everybody. Welcome to Hillbilly Herpetology. I'm Webb. And uh, you might say, Webb, what in ever-living heck are you doing inside of an enclosure? Well, we're here for our next part of the series on savannah monitors, diapause. And this is actually going to be a multi-part series. And uh, in this, I'm going to talk about multiple different things along with diapause, like diet along with diapause. But first and foremost, what diapause is, is it's an area of the year for savanna monitors over in Africa. It gets to be very dry. And when it's dry, they cannot find uh, any food and they have a hard time finding water. So for this period, uh, they go without and a lot of the adults will go up in the trees and hang out in the trees and the younger monitors will find places in the ground where it's still a little bit damp where they can hang out and ride it out until they actually start getting rain so uh, these guys will be going through their first diapause this year and i'm welcoming you here in the series to actually watch it happen so every two weeks we're going to be doing an update so <clears throat> this is just the intro to it yeah, your food's up here, buddy. It's not down here. It's up here. Up here. <laughs> this is sketchy. <laughs> hey, no, you guys eat. Okay, well, here. I brought multiple bulls, so we didn't have any issues. Um, so, uh, diapause for these guys is going to be where you simulate that in the, in the wild, so that way they're ready for breeding. This will be their first one this year because they were yearlings, and you don't do it with yearlings. So now they're all a year and a half old, and so this will be their first diapause season. And so what I will do to simulate that is I'm going to slowly start giving them less and less water. I'm going to dry out their enclosure instead of misting this down all the time. I'm going to actually be uh, letting it dry out instead. And then as far as their water bowl goes, I'll start taking that out as well. And when I take their water bowl out, I'll take it out for a couple of days at a time and I'll put it back in and then I'll take it back out for a couple of days at a time. And each time I take it out, I'll leave it out longer. And I'll, over the course of a month or two, totally dry out their enclosure and totally make it to where they have a lack of water. And I'll keep it like that for a few months. And we'll go over all the steps of this as we're doing it. Um, so the reason we're doing this is it helps to regulate their weight. Photo bombing. He's saying hello. All right. So the point of diapause is so that way these guys can breed. A. Um, it's thought that if they don't go through diapause, that they're not going to breed well. And then beyond that, uh, the way that these guys are in the wild, the, the fact that they only eat sparingly throughout part of the year, makes it to where it's hard to keep these guys at a healthy weight and that affects their breeding too so if you can keep these guys maintained at a healthy weight by doing diapause and it's what they go through naturally then i say why not do that so uh g has actually successfully put a female through diapause uh one year already so we know that it can be done without hurting them there's other people who have done it as well linnea sifia varga has done it as well and she's actually had successful breeding with it so this will be our attempt at it this year so what we're going to do is every two weeks i'm going to show you the different in their difference in their enclosure now one thing i'll say with this enclosure this this wooden enclosure i built it's nice but it also has a very hard time keeping humidity as you can see it's a little bit dusty and just the other day i wetted it down real good now it's only dusty on the top if you go after the top you're going to pull up moist dirt and so I keep it extra moist down here. They can always dig down to moisture since it's not good uh, moisture up here on these levels. They do hang out up here a lot, obviously. There are lights up here. But they go down here at nighttime, and this is how they get their humidity. I keep this humid. So over the course of the next few months, we're going to be slowly drying it out. But first, I want to prep them for this. So I'm feeding them egg whites with millworms and some protein uh, or no, some 
vitamin supplements and calcium with D3 in it. I'm going to make sure that these guys are in prime condition going into diapause. That is the most important thing. If you have an animal with parasites, if you have an animal that is not in superb health, you cannot put them through diapause. They're not ready for that. But if your animal is in great health and if you've taken the time before you start diapause to make sure that they're in perfect health, they're totally hydrated, and they're ready to go through this ordeal, then you can do it. You have to look at the fact. Out in the wild, these guys have just went through a time of feast, okay? So now it's time for the famine, and you have to simulate that. You have to, without getting them overweight during the time of feast, you have to simulate that feast. So that's what we're doing now. We're making sure it's super nice and moist and humid in here, and then over the course of the next few months, we're gonna tone that back. And this is the first step in that process now another thing i wanted to do was put a couple of extra branches in here for these guys so eric if you could just hand me a couple of those branches right there we'll do that while we're here um we brought a couple of extra monitors back from gary's and the funny thing is now that we have them here and we have godzilla next to a few of them what we noticed is for sure one of these is a female you can just tell and so it will obviously be staying in the program and since the other one is a male we may be finding a uh, uh, a new homing for it because we don't need all the extra males we have a lot of extra males um, but as you can see they have no problem at all eating this egg white and the great thing with the egg white is it contains almost no calories right so I'm able to feed them this they're getting plenty of nutrition as far as the vitamin supplement, as far as the protein in the egg, as far as the calcium supplement with the D3. They're getting all of that, but at the same time, they're not going to be getting all that extra caloric intake. I took the yolks out, so there's not a bunch of extra fat in there from that. And so I'm hoping that by feeding them this, I'm going to be getting them primed up vitamin and mineral wise for diapause, but at the same time, not allowing them to gain all the extra weight. And the way they do this in the wild is they have giant crickets, there's snails, there's all these things that they eat that are low in fat and high in protein and high in vitamins and minerals. So I'm kind of just trying to uh, simulate that. I'm just trying to simulate what their diet would be in the wild without having those giant crickets here. And that is my goal here. So this has been the first step of the progress. All right, so diapause. Um, conclusion. Uh, first of all, sorry that we were a little bit sidetracked up there, but not used to feeding those particular monitors together at the same time usually. Uh, so it was kind of an experimental process. It worked out pretty good. Um, they obviously have to figure it out because they get the food on them and then they smell each other as food but luckily they all worked together well and quickly realized that even if each other smelled like food they were not food so that worked out well but uh like i said the main the main point of diapause is just to suspend their diet suspend their water intake and simulate what they're going through in the wild during the dry months of the year. And then as you slowly take them into the process of being dried out and having dryness and no food, then you slowly reverse that process and start putting their water back in. Start putting the water back in the dirt, feed them sparingly again until bam, monsoon, and you wet it all down and you get it to where it's that season again where they're eating and then their body picks up because they're eating and it's water again and that's what stimulates the females to develop the eggs that's what stimulates the males into the breeding behavior that's what stimulates the breeding process that's what we're going for here at webbed up exotics and so we're putting it on the hillbilly herpetology channel thank you all for watching like subscribe comment for more great content and we'll keep it coming